My name is Mikko Suvanto, and this is the Mosomic Memes Microphone Guide. I start this episode by talking about one more thing related to the electrical implementation of Memes microphones into devices, and that's ESD. After that, I'll switch over to talking about Memes microphone reliability, about which I'll also talk in the following episodes. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. Immunity to electrostatic discharges, ESD, is an important electrical robustness factor for a MEMS microphone. It describes how well a microphone or a microphone system can withstand discharges without being damaged. As I explained in episode 9, in which I talked about the ESD immunity of microphone components, electrostatic shocks are high voltage discharges. The damage these discharges can cause can be electrical damage to the sensitive semiconductor components within the microphone, or mechanical damage to the microphone sensor. Electrical damage can occur because of the high electrical voltage, as high as 25 kV, associated with a discharge that can damage the integrated circuits in the microphone. Mechanical damage can be caused by the high amplitude pressure shock associated with a discharge. The pressure pulse is caused by the rapid heating and explosive expansion of the air around the spark. The pressure pulse, especially if it occurs inside the confined space of a microphone sound channel in a device, can be very strong, equivalent to a sound pulse 150 decibels or even significantly higher in amplitude. The sound channel directs the shock directly to the sensor. The damage can cause the microphone to stop working completely or it can have a bit less drastic effects, such as sensitivity changes, changes in frequency response, an increase in noise, or other audible disturbances. Since microphones are essential components in many types of devices, good ESD immunity of microphones is very important to ensure that microphones and devices remain operational and maintain high performance. In addition to the ESD immunity of the microphone itself, also, its implementation into the device plays a big role in the ESD immunity of the whole system. In this episode, I'll shed some light on the things that the device designer can do to improve the ESD immunity of the system. ESD immunity differs from power supply rejection and RF immunity because ESD as a phenomenon is different from RF and other electrical disturbances. ESD hitting a microphone is a random and typically relatively rare occurrence, not a continuous phenomenon like RF interference or other electrical disturbances. The snap of an ESD spark is also very loud, so trying to prevent it from being audible is a futile task. In other words, there's no point in trying to suppress the audible disturbance during the discharge. What we do try is to preserve the well-being and continuous performance of the microphone and the whole microphone system. To achieve that, the microphone system must withstand reasonable ESD events, such as the discharges that can occur during the production process of a microphone or the device, or in everyday life when the device is used. Key indicators of good ESD immunity of a microphone are that the microphone returns back to normal operation immediately after the discharge, and that the spark does not cause any lingering effects or permanent changes in the characteristics of the microphone. What comes to the nature of MEMS microphones built into devices, as compared to other sensitive electrical components in devices, a key difference is that microphones are directly exposed to ESD sparks because of the air connection from the surface of the device to the microphone. Both the electrical and mechanical damage risks have to be taken into account both in the design of the microphone and also in the way the microphone is implemented into the device. First of all, high ESD robustness of a MEMS microphone system starts with a microphone component that has a high ESD immunity. If the microphone is robust enough, both electrically and mechanically, 
A device designer may not have to do much to take ESD robustness into account in the design of the device. The key things in the microphone are good grounding, preferably a well-grounded full Faraday cage built into the microphone package, ESD protection built into the ASIC of the microphone, signal traces and sensitive electronics should be protected with, for example, ESD diodes or other ESD filter systems. There should be exposed ground connectors in the microphone package at the sound port to catch sparks before they enter the microphone. The key thing is to eliminate the sparks as far away from the MEMS sensor as possible. To prevent damage caused by the acoustic shock related to an ESD event, the microphone sound sensor element should be mechanically robust so that it can take the shock. The ESD rating of the microphone component can usually be found in the component datasheet. For example, human body model and machine model ratings can be listed. The datasheet may also include other ESD information, such as handling instructions. The implementation of the microphone into the device should extend the capabilities of the microphone to give the microphone and the system the best possible chances of surviving an ESD spark. The ground quality must be high also within the device, so that the discharges have a low impedance path to the ground of the device, so that the discharge bypasses the microphone. Compromising ground quality should be avoided also in more challenging cases, such as the one where the microphone is mounted on a flexible circuit board. Also factors such as narrow circuit board traces, poorly designed vias between circuit board layers, or low quality connectors can compromise the grounding. The impact of an acoustic shock can be mitigated by preventing the discharge from getting too close to the sensor element. It's always better if the discharge is grounded before it gets to the microphone. This can be done by designing grounding points for ESD sparks into or around the sound channel in the device. The grounding points can be, for example, exposed ground connectors or a conductive grounded dust mesh. A dust mesh can also attenuate the pressure shock caused by an ESD spark and thereby decrease the risk of damage. Okay, let's talk about reliability. The reliability of a MEMS microphone is extremely important, especially in a mass-produced device. In many devices, a malfunctioning microphone or a microphone that changes its characteristics can render the device useless. Throughout its lifetime, a microphone faces a wide variety of conditions, abuse and other factors that can change or damage it. These factors include, for example, environmental factors such as temperature, humidity and contamination. They can also be mechanical things such as accelerations, vibrations, mechanical impacts, mechanical pressure and pressure shocks. They can also be electrical events such as ESD. Also time and aging are significant factors, especially when combined with the factors I just listed. The length of the assumed lifetime of a device and the microphones in it varies depending on the device type. In most cases, it's safe to assume that anything below five years is not acceptable. Now that microphones are being implemented in new device types with long expected lifetimes, the lifetime expectancy for a microphone can easily be 20 years. Devices with long expected lifetimes can be, for example, home appliances, building infrastructure systems, vehicles, and so on. I'll talk more about the hazards microphones face in the next episode. The type and nature of the device the microphone is in can affect the requirements for microphone reliability and robustness a lot. How and where and in what kind of conditions the microphones and the devices are used can vary a lot. For example, the robustness requirements are different for a laptop that is typically handled carefully versus a smartphone that is handled more carelessly and even sometimes dropped versus a wearable that one wears day and night in various environments such as in the shower, while swimming and so on. 
To minimize the risk of failures, the microphone and the microphone system must be robust against all the things that they face during the lifetime of the component inside the device. The characteristics and performance of the microphone should not change significantly as long as the conditions the microphone operates in stay within reasonable limits. What reasonable means can vary a lot from device type to another. All this sets a lot of requirements on the capability of a microphone to stay functional and avoid changes in its characteristics and performance. There are many factors related to the microphone and the device that affect the reliability of the microphone. First of all, of course, is the microphone itself. Is the design susceptible to contamination or weather conditions? Are the MEM sensor and the package designs mechanically vulnerable? Is the design electrically robust? And so on. Also the manufacturing of the microphones, including the transportation of the microphones to the device factory, can have a big impact on the lifetime reliabilities of the microphones. Key manufacturing factors are, for example, the semiconductor processes and facilities in which the MEMS and the ASIC are made, the assembly of the microphone package, the accuracies of the manufacturing methods and equipment, the cleanliness of the facilities and processes, the quality and accuracy, both dimensional and composition, of the materials used to make the microphone, the know-how, amount of experience with microphones, and motivation level of the manufacturing personnel, the handling of the microphones throughout all the manufacturing stages, also the capability of the production testing at the microphone manufacturing factory to weed out bad components and outliers plays a key role in the reliability and quality of the outgoing microphones. It's also important to ask whether the microphone, including all the things that affect its reliability, has been designed to be manufacturable realistically and repeatably in mass production. If making the microphone robust requires having dimensional accuracies, or material properties, or using production procedures that are difficult to control accurately, the risk of reliability problems increases. Material property inaccuracies can affect, for example, semiconductor doping levels, or coatings used to protect the chips. These variations can have a big effect on the environmental reliability of the microphone. Significant dimensional inaccuracies can occur, for example, in some etching processes that are used to manufacture the MEMS sensor, if the design of the sensor does not take manufacturing realities into account well enough. These inaccuracies can affect, for example, the mechanical robustness of the sensor. The reliability of a new MEMS microphone design must be tested and verified before it's released out to the market. I'll talk more about MEMS microphone reliability testing in episodes 27 and 28. The next big factor that affects the reliability and robustness of a microphone is the design of the device. Is the microphone properly implemented into the device mechanically, electrically and acoustically? Mechanical implementation has a big impact on how well the microphone is protected against hazards inside the device and how stable the microphone system is. The electrical implementation of the microphone may affect reliability, for example, in the case of an electrostatic discharge, if the electrical grounding of the microphone is not good enough. Acoustical implementation affects the shape of the sound channel and thereby, for example, the amount of contamination that gets to the microphone and its ESD protection level. You can find a lot of information on proper microphone implementation in episodes 13 to 21 of this MEMS microphone guide. Also the manufacturing of the device can affect the reliabilities of the microphones. How are the microphones treated during device assembly? Are standard manufacturing practices followed, for example, in terms of ESD protection, reflow temperatures and so on? Are band methods, such as pressurized air cleaning or liquid cleaning, used? Are the production facilities clean? How well is production testing of the device able to weed out bad microphones and outliers? 
One more very significant factor in the reliability of a microphone in a device is the way the device is used by the user. Key questions are whether the device is being used the way it was designed to be used and in conditions it was designed to be used in. The stability and reliability of each microphone in a microphone system can have a big impact on the performance, accuracy and functionality of the whole system. The severities of the consequences in the case a microphone stops working completely depend on the device and the microphone system. A single microphone application, in which the microphone is a key functional part, is likely to become immediately useless if the microphone fails. A device that has multiple microphones, or an application in which the microphone is not a crucial part of the operation, may be able to continue operating with reduced capabilities. It's a different case when the microphone doesn't stop working completely, but is somehow otherwise affected. Like I explained in episode 10, microphone systems, especially ones with multiple microphones, may suffer greatly if the characteristics of the microphones change or vary because of environmental variables or other reliability factors. Variation over time or use case, or variation caused by environmental conditions, can cause the microphone system or the signal processing system that the microphones feed to fail. Key microphone parameters to be kept an eye on are, for example, sensitivity, frequency response, phase characteristics, distortion and self-noise. Okay, that's it for this episode. In the next one I'll talk about reliability hazards. Thanks for watching, I hope I'll see you around, cheers! If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you liked what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation.